Nuggets first. Today, I'm honored to have the chance to be talking with some amazing talent from the new family adventure film, Hero Dog, The Journey Home. This one will tug at your heartstrings, keep you in suspense, and will allow viewers to gain such a huge appreciation for those who are challenged with disabilities. We have both Richard Boddington, the director of the film, and Zachary Arthur, who plays Max, here with us today. Richard has been making films since the age of 12. He's worked as a director, writer, producer, editor, and has traveled the world as a cinematographer. Zachary also started early in the film industry at the young age of six. Since then, he's been in a variety of films, TV series, commercials, and other projects. It's great to have them with us today. Welcome, Richard and Jack Zachary. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's great to be here. Let's jump right into some questions for Mr. Boddington. You have directed several movies involving animals, including dogs, bears, wolves, lions, cobras, giraffes, and elephants. And you always use real animals, which is very cool. What is your connection to these kinds of films? Well, I think, uh, you know, I grew up in the, I was your age in the 1970s when uh, Disney made a lot of these kind of movies. And of course, this is long before computer generated imagery was possible. And so Disney always used real animals. Uh, and I just fell in love with that format of filmmaking. And I decided that as the world departed from that and started using, you know, computer generated animals in all their movies that I would stick with the old format of using uh, real animals. And uh, I've had such tremendous success with it, uh, you know, uh, the smartest animal that I've worked with in cinema is the elephant. Uh, they're incredibly uh, intelligent animals. And um, the one key thing that I share with people about using real animals is that you can't program into a computer the unpredictability of a living organism. And so often an animal on set will do something that we couldn't have possibly written into the script. It just performs that. It, it does it uh, because it's a living organism and it doesn't know what it's going to do from one minute to the next. And so we've captured so much of these uh, amazing, uh, you know, pieces uh, throughout the collection, all my collection of feature films involving animals that we just wouldn't have had if we had used computer generated animals. That's really true. Um, I'm a huge animal lover myself. Since we're on the subject of animals, what was your experience like working with Chinook, the dog posters in the film? Did he have to go through any special training in order to follow commands? Well, all of the dogs that appear in my movies are what we call movie dogs. And they've gone through an extensive uh, training process before they come onto my set. And I audition the dogs the same way I do human actors. I'll ask, you know, we'll have the dog start from a distance from the camera and then we'll put a mark down and we'll call the dog to that mark. And we expect him to walk forward and stop on that mark. Uh, we also expect him to speak on command, sit on command, and be extraordinarily well behaved and follow uh, all of the trainer's directions. So when, when people are watching a movie involving a, involving a dog star, what they don't see off camera behind the camera are the trainers giving hand signals uh, to the dog because they can't speak, obviously, while we're rolling camera. So the dogs are trained with uh, hand signals, and these are the very elite of elite uh, trained dogs. They do things that your typical dog living at home simply uh, isn't capable of doing. He did an amazing job in this film. I really enjoyed his role, to be honest. The next questions are from Mr. Arthur. I really appreciate the outdoors. So many of my favorite scenes were watching you put all your survival skills into play in order to save your dad. Do you consider yourself an outdoorsman in real life? Um, not really, no. I've always grown up in the city, but I always love when I go camping. And especially during this movie, it was so fun learning all these different survivor skills, like creating a fishing pole just out of sticks and everything that we just found in the wilderness. It was amazing. And um, make, even making fire from scratch. I felt like, like an outdoorsman, like a real outdoorsman. And so, yeah, it was super fun. Thanks for sharing that with us. Those scenes were fun to watch for me. There are also so many great scenes in the film. Is there any one that you can call your favorite? You know what? The first thing that comes to my mind is obviously the helicopter scenes. It was so fun. I've never been in a helicopter before. Um, there was one time we were, we were visiting Niagara Falls and we did go in a helicopter that time, but it was, yeah, the helicopter scene, so fun. I really enjoyed that scene as well. 
Switching back to Mr. Boddington, I read that you traveled the world as a cinematographer. That's so amazing. I'm curious why you chose the wilderness of Canada as a location for this film. Well, it's where I live, uh, for one thing. Uh, we do have a beautiful uh, untamed uh, wilderness here in Northern Ontario, uh, Canada. Many people think it looks like uh, Alaska, but uh, it's actually uh, Northern Ontario. Northern Ontario is very unique because it's part of what's called the Canadian Shield, which is a massive area of uh, rock and uh, hundreds of thousands of lakes. Uh, it's a beautiful area in the fall as the fall colors uh, come in. Of course, as you know from looking at my background, I also shot two movies in, in Southern Africa, uh, which was also just fantastic. I love Africa and I love spending time there and shooting movies there. Um, so any of the uh, you know, the Canadian wilderness, the uh, African wilderness just makes spectacular settings for movies, again, in an era where people are shooting in front of green screens, uh, inside air conditioned studios. Uh, my cast and crew are outside, uh, you know, with the, uh, with the elements. When it's hot, it's hot. When it rains, it rains. And, uh, and we deal with that. But that brings a sense of realism to these movies that uh, is often lacking in a lot of modern, you know, cinema these days. Well, I really think that viewers are going to love these nature scenes. Is there anyone who inspired you to create this film? Perhaps someone in your life with a disability? Well, it's funny because uh, uh, I came up with the idea just uh, the, the way all my films start is just a, a genesis, which is literally just a, a one sentence. And going back, like, um, say, eight years ago, when I made the first Against the Wild film, all I, all I sent out to my producing partners and the distributors was, it simply said, against the wild, two kids and their dogs survive in the wilderness after a plane crash. And that's all it was. And from that uh, came the script and the financing and the cast and finally the successful release worldwide of the movie. And it's amazing how, you know, for all the young listeners out there, remember that all ideas start as just one tiny little genesis, just a, just a small statement. And from there, it just grows. And the same thing with, uh, with Hero Dog, I one day came up with an idea about, you know, what would happen if there was a plane crash in the wilderness and the pilot didn't survive and the passenger was a blind man, it was just him and the dog. How would they survive in that situation where the blind man has human intelligence, but he can't see, and the dog has dog intelligence, but he can see? To me, that, I just thought that would make a fascinating uh, duo who has to rely on each other uh, in order to survive. And as I developed it, 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 it you know, that, from that tiny little genesis, it became this movie, except it's not a uh, plane crash, as you know, it's actually a, a shipwreck. It was, wonderful, it was wonderful to see how challenges from a disability can be overcome while watching this film. Back to Mr. Arthur. There are some emotional scenes within Hero Dog, The Journey Home. As an actor myself, I know that the shift emotions can be difficult. How is it for you to do these scenes? Well, I think of myself as a Methodist actor, so I like to put my kind of feelings and emotions into um, the scripts and the scenes. Um, I kind of try to put myself into the movie in a sense. Um, you know, the emotions are easier to come if you're really experiencing them firsthand. And so, yeah, that's really it. Thanks for sharing that with us. You've been in a variety of films since the age of six. What was it like having a dog as a co-star? Oh, it's so fun, you know, Ikona or Chinook, as you guys know him. Um, super fun, super smart. He's actually a really good actor. Yeah, and we all got to know him so well, and it's just like having another little brother, but he's a dog. <laughs> I would love to take on a role with an animal co-star. Mr. Boddington. I love that you edit your own film. That is something that not many directors do. Tell me how that works so well for you. Okay, so when I'm making a movie, I'm using a technique called shooting the edit. And shooting the edit means that, you know, when you're working with one camera, what happens is that camera has to record every single component of the scene from multiple angles and from multiple fields of view. So the actors uh, repeat um, all of the uh, lines many, many times during the, during the scene. So what I do is I shoot the pieces that I know that I'm going to use in my final edit. Uh, then I spend about uh, five, six weeks um, putting it all together myself. I, you know, I work entirely on my own. 
uh, editing the entire film, but I know the footage so well. Uh, I know how that scene was going to go together uh, the way I shot it. So um, it, it's, I, I've been editing my own film since I was 12 years old. Uh, when I started with Super 8, I, I always cut my own film. Um, and I, you know, the, the next most important person on a film set after the director is the editor. Uh, he or she has the most power to make or break a movie. And a fantastic edit can save a poorly shot movie. That's how powerful editing can be. Thank you. Um, that's actually really interesting. Thank you so much, Richard Boddington and Zachary Arthur, for talking with us today. We really enjoyed learning more about Hero Dog, The Journey Home, which will be released on digital, VOD, and DVD March 23rd, 2021. This is a great film, so don't miss it. This is Donna DiGravio reporting for Kids First. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to see more to see more reviews. Catch you next time. Thanks, Dominic. Yeah, thank you so much.